me, there are three big lessons to learn right now from the Japan situation. The first is that we need to think about follow-on consequences as well as the primary event. In Japan, the nuclear power plant situation is a follow-on consequence of the earthquake and tsunami. And what that means is, for planning purposes, for preparedness, we need to think about the follow-on events that could be closely tied to the primary or initiating events. With respect to a power plant, for example, we need to think about loss of power as a follow-on to an earthquake and a tsunami. The second big lesson learned is that sometimes it's the simplest technology that can come back to bite you. In Japan, with the nuclear power plant situation, the situation was really triggered by a loss of electricity and by the failure of the backup generators to kick in. And those backup generators, very simple technology. Because they didn't kick in, the pumps failed to deliver on a continuous basis cooling water to the reactor core. We can learn from that in the United States that we need both the sophisticated technology and the simple technology to work, and we need backups that are both targeted at the sophisticated and the simple technologies. So the third big lesson learned is construct scenarios to test your preparedness that really cover the full range of possibilities. And this third lesson is really a consequence of the first two lessons. So think about scenarios that you're going to use to exercise preparedness that are realistic, but realistic doesn't mean, oh, most probable to occur. Realistic has to include things that are less likely to occur, but more catastrophic. If you look at what happened in Japan, it isn't a case, for example, with the nuclear power plant that it wasn't built to withstand any tsunami. It was. It just wasn't built to withstand a tsunami of this magnitude.